this guy is the luckiest guy in the world. He has his dad giving him a two-story bar, his mom giving him a place to stay, and now he has a cousin who's working for him on her own free time at a loss. How is this guy screwing this up? What's up guys, it's your boy Alan again, back with another video, and today we're gonna watch another episode of Bar Rescue. But before we start, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and uh, let's go check this out. When Tony's son Nick graduated from college, Tony gave him the keys to Why Not 3. He doesn't have the know-it-all that I do learning from my father. He didn't get that experience. He thought bar ownership was a party. So this is interesting. Uh, so the dad owns several bars and looks like he gave some of these bars to the children. So unlike a lot of these bar rescue episodes that we've seen, there is experience. So that's the plus. And it sounds like the sister is doing well and the brother is the black sheep of the family. And this doesn't just happen with bars, but also happens with restaurants. The thing is, it doesn't get easier, even if you do know or you have the resources to know about bars. And it's kind of like when a king, which is well loved, passes the crown to like the young prince who is spoiled and everyone hates him, doesn't trust him with the kingdom. I have a sense that this is probably what's happening, where you have the dad who's, you know, very successful at building all these bars, but the kid is probably, you know, spoiled, probably thinks that, yeah, one day this bar will be mine and he doesn't really take it seriously as a business. So um, that's the vibe that I'm getting, like that he probably just thinks that I'm set for life being handed down a bar. But uh, yeah, let's go see what happens. Experience. He thought bar ownership was a party. So your dad bought the building. Mm-hmm. Rented the bar to Nick. I don't think. So the dad owns the building? That is so, <laughs> it's a gold mine if you own the building. Like, I don't, this sh yeah, like you shouldn't even be failing if, if you're renting the building out of your dad. He's probably not even charging him that much. To Nick. I don't think my brother's really paid much rent in a few years. Like mm -hmm. how much? 5,000 a month times 10 years. 10 years? He hasn't paid rent in 10 years? This is insane. If your dad owns a building, why would you not pay him? He's your own, you know, he's your dad. Dude, I feel bad for the dad. He must, dude, he could have rented this building out to somebody else that would have paid. I know that it's his own son, so he can't kick him out. But 10 years? That's pretty much my entire bartending experience right now. What I find interesting is it looks like a house. Why Not 3 is a 4,000 square foot space spread between two stories. The downstairs bar is Wow. This is a two-story bar. So not only does a dad own this building, but it's a two-story bar. And the second floor, this is in Milwaukee, a busy city, so you have a nice view of the city. The son must be really, really incompetent to have a place like this that's failing. Look at this place. It's a dump. It is a dump. This is the way he inherits. This is how you're gonna treat your dad's property. This is a good location, a good building, two stories. The least you can do is to keep up maintenance of this place. Like, how do you let something like this fall apart? Like, the, the crack right where the guest is sitting. Two stories. Could be a lot of things. Yes, the concept opportunities and the creative opportunities are fantastic with the two-floor space. Yeah. Especially in a market like this, this place should be packed. Yeah, like this is a very dense city. This bar is huge. I can't imagine why a place like this would be empty, you know, besides not being taken care of. So where's your brother? There he is. And there he is drinking. We drink. Oh my God. Not only is he drinking, he's sitting at the bar. This is not what an owner is supposed to look like. He should not look like another customer. Every night? He's in the bar, he's drinking. What kind of home? And he's taking shots. Let me see her. Well, he's currently living with my mom. So he's living with your mom. Can you imagine, like, you have a dad who literally just gave you a bar, but despite that, you still don't even do anything with that. And in 10 years, despite owning a bar, you're not even making enough that you have to live with your mom. Like, his parents gave him so much opportunity that this is just getting thrown away. Bella's just so mean of you guys. And that's Angelica, our cousin, and she's worked for us for a long time. She also started bartending at 18. She's put in her dues and like to own her own bar. So yeah, earlier, if you see my older videos, I, uh, I'm usually against family members hiring each other's. 
This is a very, very unique situation because you do have a dad who has experience, taught the daughter, and now they're training uh, the cousin. So in this situation, this is like one of the few exceptions I would make that hiring a family member is actually not a bad idea because there's actually proper training with the exception of the son who I guess has a training but just not applying it. Mark, eventually, she can't work here more than one day a week because she can't afford it. What do you mean? She doesn't make she enough doesn't money. She doesn't make enough money. So if this bar was more successful, she... Wow, so the cousin... <laughs> At first, you know, I've seen people hire the relatives because uh, they're trying to help them out because they are usually have trouble with the law or something that they can't find any other jobs. So the relatives end up hiring their daughter or whatever, a friend, because they're trying to help them out. But this is a little different. This is the cousin's actually not doing this because she can't find another job. Like, like as we heard earlier, she's properly trained. She's actually bartending here because bar is failing. So this dynamic is completely different than what we have seen before. Okay, so I buy shots. Guess what? We get some more free shots from the owner. He's giving away your money. Are you upset? I'm not very happy at all. I understand that it's a culture here in Milwaukee. You know, you can't give away shots, but. It seems that the guests are winning at a, you know, they're beating the house at a disproportionate rate. Yeah, there are definitely places I've seen where they have games and stuff that gives away free alcohol, but not at this high of a rate. You need to have some kind of challenge for the customers that they want to come back and not just being guaranteed, you know, free drinks. Otherwise, it won't be fun and it's not a good business decision in the long run. So look what's going on upstairs. Are you kidding me? Why is this? If this looks like two different bars. Are they doing body shots? No, the hair's already doing it. So would you ever let them do this in your bar? Absolutely not. This is like a frat house. Why is this happening upstairs? The upstairs should be the one that most people go to because it has the view. Like we talked about this before. Two level bars upstairs. That should be the main bar. Manscaped before all this. It's a frat house. Isn't she supposed to lick your nipple first and then suck it? They're not going to make money like that. He's in the room watching this. Yes, not doing anything. Look at this. Take it like a champ. He's right there watching this happen. Why is he allowing this to happen? This is a health code violation. It doesn't look good on paper. Like imagine somebody taking a picture of this and putting it on social media. That would make a lot of people not want to come here. He has no courage. He goes to the corner to try to avoid any kind of conflict or confrontation. He hides. So he's not just allowing this to happen. He's just afraid to speak up about it. Like, he knows it's wrong. So this is a free-for-all right now. Not only are the guests all getting free drinks, but they pretty much own this place. They can do whatever they want. Can you imagine the liability if somebody just slips and falls down and gets hurt? Where is Nick? Dancing on a bar with shots in their hand. One of these girls could kill themselves. That's irresponsible. Nick shouldn't let this happen. Jesus Christ. He just walked out of the, his own bar. He knows this is happening. What's wrong with him? And he's now smoking a cigarette, just allowing this chaos to happen. The bartender's got it under control, so whatever. He. Th this guy is in denial. They don't have it under control. You can see the bartender trying to get the girls to come down and they won't listen. It's a customer. Look at this. Did you see him open? Did you see that? They're destroying property just to open the, the bottle cap. No wonder why this bar is falling apart. They're letting the customers destroy it. The bottle on the bar. He thinks it's at his house. This is a business. The customer just walked behind the bar and grabbed himself a beer. Are you kidding me? No, no, no. Oh my god. As if walking and dancing on a bar wasn't enough, now you have people playing on the stairs? Oh no. Somebody's gonna get hurt. You bet. This is your father's building. He'll get sued. <laughs> Dude, how is this? Oh my god. This can't be happening. This place is being overrun by the customers. Like, we've seen this before. They need to kick everybody out right now he's a part of this now and now he's allowed. he's a part of it it doesn't even seem like he cares i'm gonna go in there i'm gonna dude, go dude he's like right there he's not even saying anything 
down. And I'm going to say the things that maybe you should have said. I'll see you later. Oh, my God. Exactly. That's, that was bound to happen. Hello, John. Yeah. When was the last time you made money? It's been quite a while. So you playing big shot on your family money? Is that the deal? Because you don't seem to be doing anything about it, man. Because daddy will give you- Dude, it doesn't even look like he's trying to be a big shot. He just, I would say he's more like a pushover. He probably knows that everything that's happening right now is wrong, but he just, he's not manning up and taking care of it. He's just allowing it to happen. How many shots did you have tonight? You don't have a clue, do you? How many shots would you say you gave away tonight? Guess. I don't know the exact amount, no. Well, you Okay, so even if you give away shots you know, as part of the dice game, you gotta have that written down somewhere. All comps should be recorded as part of the nightly report. You love the phrase, I don't know, don't you? What are you gonna do to make this work, Nick? Just keep plugging away at it. I don't know what else to do. You have a family of successful bar owners you could just ask your sister or your dad for help i mean it looks like the sister jumped in to help without even him asking for it unlike a lot of these bar rescues that we've seen like this guy has the resources how much money do you owe your father i can't give you an exact amount you owe your father a half a million dollars how do your crew have a million dollars and not have any idea of that number is that's that's insane it's not like five bucks this is half a million, like a six-digit debt. How many shots would you say you gave away? I run myself a tab every shift. You ran yourself a $33 tip. See, this is how you know this bartender knows what she's doing. She actually kept track of how many shots she gave away. This is like one of the rarest moments in Bar Rescue where you actually have bartenders who actually know what they're doing. Tonight. I did. And now you're going to pay that tab. Of course. I'm not just going to give the bar away. Because you're not promoting or managing a tour. Wow. So even though she has the option of charging the shots to the house, she's still going to pay it herself. And she's paying for it just because she feels sorry for him. Well, you should be super grateful you have such a good employee. This guy is the luckiest guy in the world. He has his dad, <laughs> his dad giving him a two-story bar, his mom giving him a place to stay, <laughs> and now he has a cousin who's working for him on her own free time at a loss, paying for the drinks that she's giving away. How is this guy screwing this up? I'm here in very large part because of Monica. How many times has he called you for money in the past five years? Maybe 20. 20 times. Oh my god. Literally, he has a whole family. <laughs> What the heck? His whole family is trying to help him and they all have the experience which is the strangest part. I would say every single video I've seen so far, the bartenders, the bar owners have no experience. This is a rare case where the entire family has experience and the owner is still screwing it up. He's still running his bar. He's in his 70s. So he hasn't retired yet? No. Do you think he would if this bar made money and he got paid his rent? This is sad. His dad literally can't retire because of his son. He could have let some other bar owner take care of it and he would have been set for life. But instead, he's doing his son a favor at a cost of his own retirement. Like the whole family is making a sacrifice to help him and he's doing nothing about it. How many years did it take your family to create that brand? Almost 50, a little over 50 years. And it took him nine to destroy it, right? Oh my God. This whole family's legacy, it's getting screwed up by this guy. You play dice during happy hour, during off hours. You don't do the same customer three, four times. He wins shot after shot after shot. And before you know it, there's no reason for him to buy anything anymore, right? Yeah, likewise, um, people think that they'll, especially newer bartenders, they think they'll get more tips if they give away more alcohol. This is absolutely not true. A lot of the biggest tippers that I've had, they're happy to pay full price and don't expect any free drinks. It's usually the people who expect free stuff, they always say like, oh, pour some more. If, they, if somebody has to say that they're going to give more tips if you pour a little bit more, like why do I need to give you more alcohol when everyone else, I don't need to give extra, is willing to tip, you know, really well. So yeah, like if you give away too much alcohol, 
And when the customer comes back and they don't get that free shot that they expected because they're conditioned that, oh, this is the place to get free shots. Guess what? They're not going to go there anymore because they're like, oh, they don't give free shots anymore. Let's just go somewhere else. Get back here, Nick. Mint Collins, please. I'll have a creamsicle. OK, um, is the recipe handy? Nope. You need to be able to come back here and be prepared. This is so slow. And it's your own employees and we just went over the recipes. This is insane. Like he says he has bartending experience. I mean, it's probably true because his family is, they're all bar owners. How is he not able to make these drinks? It's not like he's being slammed right now. Why are you doing that? Yeah, why, why is he slamming the bar with the bottles like that? I, I was wondering the same thing. Look, get the air bubbles out. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> what? I've never heard of that! Air bubbles? What air bubbles? Wait, did I hear that right? Why are you doing that? Look, get the air bubbles out. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> You're short pouring. It also looks like he's covering the vent, which is also causing the pour spouts to not come out smoothly. So the way it works is there's a vent for the pour spout very close to the base and it allows air to come in and that's what allows the liquid to come out of the pour spouts without, you know, the glug glug thing. So I don't know why he's holding it like that. It, it kind of defeats the purpose of the pour spout. Be aggressive. You need to be Yeah, it's not coming out. Here. He's blocking the Conf he's blocking the hole. Why is he doing this? I never I've never seen anyone slam the bottles like that to get rid of bubbles, and I've never... See, where did he learn how to bartend? Like, is he not paying attention on his own experienced staff? Confidence. You're shaking without ice. How is this guy... have a whole family of, like, successful bartenders and bar owners, and he's making all these mistakes, and does he know what he's doing? No ice? What? Ugh. What you're doing with that little shake what is he doing he's why is he just like shaking like that you gotta shake it with the small tumbler and like what he just saw her teach this stuff how couldn't doesn't you ring a bell like i've never s seen any of this i've never seen this bouncing the thing i've never seen the covering of the hole holding and i've never seen this weird shake that doesn't do anything. Like, where is he coming up with this stuff? He comes to the bar and drinks every day, even if he hasn't bartended in a long time. Like, is he not paying attention to what the bartenders are doing? Like, has he seen them do this weird rolling, jostling thing? How do you own a bar for nine years and not, there's only two techniques to bartending that makes up 99% of drinks and that's shaking and stirring and shaking is the main technique. Like, how does he, even if he hasn't bartended in nine years, like, how do you forget something like that? In a perfect world, those would be identical. It's a Collins drink. How much soda was he expecting to fill off that one on the right? There's only that much space. It's almost to the top of the glass. A bit rough, wasn't it? This is nothing compared to what it's going to be like tonight. And your heart doesn't seem to be in it. It's hard to work for a bar when the person who's at the helm of it doesn't seem to give a He's been a failure for so long. Oh my god. Bartending is like the most fun job I've ever done. Like, how could he be so unmotivated it looks like he's in pain who knows that he's operating this place beneath the standards that you would and you're okay with that no i'm not okay with it but what do you do take the key ring from him no i can't what? use my son i can throw him out you're not abandoning your kid by taking away his keys it doesn't even look like he wants to do it like we saw him like bartending and he doesn't even know how to shake a cocktail like how do you own a bar for nine years and not know how to shake a cocktail like you could see it happen he hasn't even been paying attention to what's going on behind the bar nine years come on that's the first thing you learn is to shake a drink and he's not even paying attention. He doesn't even look like he wants to own a bar. Nick has to prove to me that he can do this. Or I'm not going to remodel this bar. I'm going to talk with Nick. And then tell him that you're going to take control of this business until he proves otherwise. No. Hey, see? Absolutely not. Dude, this guy's 38 years old. If he hasn't learned it by now, after nine years, you think he's going to magically somehow pick something up, learn something new, and get motivated? Come on, nine years owning this place. Dress test is going to go for an hour and a half tonight. There was discussion about you not being trained, so tonight I want you to start as a bar back. When you succeed at that level, I'm going to promote you to bartender. <laughs> yeah, you, if you can't shake 
the drinks for your bartenders because you haven't been paying attention these nine years. At least help them get ice and wash the glassware. That would be way more helpful than getting behind the bar and making the drinks incorrectly. I do four at a time. You have all these bar tools in front of you. Why would you not do... You could put two drinks in one shaker. You have two shakers. You could do four. Especially when it's the same drink. It's not like making four different drinks at the same time. He'll be with you in a second. He doesn't know what the hell to do. He doesn't know what he's doing. What? He looks like he's gonna fall asleep or something. What do we do to speed up production here? Look at this. Dirty glassware. Come on. Like, I said this a million times, all right? And they're not even that busy. But whenever you need a breather or you're like, get stifled or something, anytime you see dirty glassware, you should just take it away. It's like the simplest job. Busting dirty plates and dirty glassware. Like, it doesn't take much thought. I know. I so what are you going to do to fix it, Mr. Barback? Can't leave it like this. Get your dishwashing station going. Oh, How can we maintain cleanliness of the bar top? It's not that busy. And these... Even if my peripheral visions like sees something like that, it, there's like an urge for me to like either I grab it or I tell somebody else to grab it. It's just an eyesore. We gotta pick up the pace. I come in and it was a disaster and I try to help him. She's helping bust the glasses. She's not even working here. We're running out of glassware over here. Why does he have a bottle in his hand? Is he pouring? Is he making drinks? Dude, he shouldn't be making drinks for now. He needs to focus on busing, clearing the bars, getting the ice, washing the glasses. Like, don't be making drinks. They don't need help making drinks right now. We're gonna need you to wash some and restock. I don't know where your bar back is, but I'll start yet. Why did he go upstairs? Oh my god, this guy just likes to hide in the corner and the bartenders need glassware. Like, I don't understand what this guy is thinking. Yelling for ice pretty soon. Monica, where's Nick? We need ice. I'll grab it for you. So the sister now is jumping behind the bar to bar back. Getting the ice. And she wasn't even planning to work today. She was only here to observe. Harry, you're not making mints? I ran out of glasses. No glasses. No glasses. Nick is a disaster. Oh my god. No glasses, no ice. The sister has to jump behind the bar and bar back for him. Dude, this guy doesn't seem to want this job. Does this bar need to be rescued? This guy doesn't even seem to care about the fate of this place. Can I get some Mint Collins glasses? He is completely inept and incapable. He is incompetent. He doesn't have any hustle in him. No, he doesn't. He's not incompetent. He's just lazy. Like, he knows what to do. He just doesn't want to do it. Is it you? Because it sure seems that way. Seems like the whole damn place inconveniences you. I'm looking upstairs. They're busier. They don't even have a bar back. The bartenders are bar backing themselves. He's just getting in the way. They want rounds of four, six drinks at a time. And these girls are in it to win it. Oh my god, everyone's having such a good time and he's, not only is he not doing anything, like he's actually breaking stuff. Oh my god, like what is his value in this business? Holy Excuse me everybody. That's the wrong kind of mob. He needs to sweep up the glassware first with a broom and then wipe away the liquor. Jesus, why is he moving so slow? He's doing more harm than good. Nick's finally moving around like a bar back. Just keeping the bar clean. He is putting forth an effort. Okay. Is that really a compliment? Oh, he finally is bar backing. He should have been doing this from the start. Ryan, don't make any more drinks. Nick, I want you bartending. Let's see what you got. <laughs> Jeez, does this guy need an energy drink or something? He's like just dozing off. Even as a bar back, he was like about to fall asleep. And now he's like a deer in headlights when the drink orders are coming in. There's only two drinks. Uh, 
Oh my god, he didn't even pour into the jigger correctly. Like he spilled, you gotta pour it to the top. <laughs> um. Dude, he's just going through the motions. He probably doesn't even know what the recipe is. He's just trying to look like he's doing something. Let <laughs> me look at John's face. <laughs> uh, wish I could just free pour this sucker. Do your best. What's the matter if you're free pouring? You don't even remember the recipes. Hi, how's it going up here? A little disastrous. Once again, he's not the jigger. You can't just pour halfway. Unless the jigger has, you know, increments that are labeled, you can't just estimate, I think that's whatever. You like, you gotta pour to the top. I like fast pace, I just, so do I, honey. Let's go, move, man, let's do it. Scooping the ice. No way. Of all the things. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, it's one thing to forget the ice when you're shaking. It's one thing to do this weird little shaking on the tin, but there's one thing that's completely unacceptable, and that is scooping ice with glass. For those who don't know why you can't do this, is because when you're scooping ice with the glass, small bits of glass might chip off into the ice and you can't see it, and you might not even notice it on the, the glass that you scooped it with. So this becomes a potential danger to the guests because you can't see the broken glass in the ice because they look the same. Seriously, that's the one thing that you cannot do. Oh, dude, this guy, how is this guy owning a bar and I don't have a bar? Like, come on, give this bar to me, I'll take care of it. Now, how many of you know that's wrong? Raise your hand. Why the hell don't you? <laughs> yeah, has this guy not seen Bar Rescue where they've done this before? Like that's... Uh, this is the one thing you can't do. Literally like not because it's not the right technique or whatever. Like you just can't, you can't do it because you could get someone hurt. What the hell gives with you? Do you care about anything? I mean this whole thing seems like a freaking inconvenience to you. You can't pick up a ice scoop that's four inches from your hand. It's right there. And he's moving so slow, it's not like he's in a rush and he forgot about it. Like, why are you like, Durr, scoop with the glass? And, uh. Nick can't tan bar. I'm not That's not even the right glasses. That's the Mint Collins. It's supposed to go into Collins glass. That's the name. He's getting the glass and the, the drinks mixed up. I can fix this bar. I'm not certain if I can fix this. Can I talk to you for a second? Yes. I just want you to know that you're the best employee of this program. You have skill. You have commitment to your... Yeah, like, why isn't she running this place? She's doing this to help him out. She's super knowledgeable, super fast. She's been bartending since she was 18, which is legal there. And she's keeping track of the drinks she gives away. Why isn't she running this place? Family? More so than your cousin, you understand that? You can turn this place around. You can. His employees have far more skills than he does. We can't leave and have him fail. Yeah, like the only reason why this place is failing is because of the owner. Literally, this is like probably the first place in Bar Rescue that I've seen where the staff is actually very, very competent. Yeah, they might be making a few mistakes here and there, but they're definitely way more qualified than the actual owner. I didn't see you on the floor, but I'm guessing that wouldn't have gone any better. Bartenders were great. Yeah. This is the one beacon of hope in this business. To be completely honest, tonight, the only person that didn't seem to want it was you. Yeah, there wasn't any complaints about the drinks at all. Like drinks were coming out fine until they ran out of glassware and that's the barback's job to make sure the bartenders have clean glasses to make drinks out of. And besides that, all the problems tonight was because of him. Ironically, this is probably the smoothest pressure test that I've seen. And the only reason why it didn't go smoother was because of his lack of action. Well, give me the keys. Put him down right on the bar phone. Come on, off here. Can't even, of all the things, he can't <laughs> bar back. He does not know how to bartend. He can't even give up the keys. So he can't, like, what does this guy, can he do anything right? I feel like it's time for you to stop being in denial about you having given Nick the training that I had. 
and that we have to figure out a way to make this bar work. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The cousin is very well trained. The sister is very well trained. It's not that he doesn't have the training. It's just that he doesn't care. He's been owning this place for nine years. How did he not pick up on anything all this time? Make it an Uber. Stop. <laughs> Stop. He hasn't. Nine years and he's learned nothing. Like how much more can you teach him? Come on, college is four years, graduate school, you know, another two, another four. The time that this guy's been doing this, it's, he could have, that's how long it takes to become a doctor. Like if he hasn't picked up on how to shake a drink in nine years, <laughs> how much more faith do you have in him? Like what, what else, seriously, like either this guy is really dumb or he just doesn't want to learn. Do you feel that if I build this brand new bar and pack it, that we're throwing Nick to the wolves? Yeah. Yeah, if he can't handle that, you know, pressure test, which wasn't even that busy, how would he survive? Like, come on, nine years. You had plenty of time to learn how to do this. I feel that way also. Did I just hear that correctly? This guy doesn't even have faith in himself. Like he doesn't look confident and not only that, he doesn't look like he wanted to learn. Maybe he just never wanted to become a bar owner in the first place. Does that disappoint you? No, not at all. Because it's family. I know this is going to work out the way we all think it will. The magic word of what you just said to me was what? Angelica. You realize you're basically handling this entire bar by yourself. I like yeah. Like I said that earlier, like she should be the manager. She knows so much. She started doing this at a younger age than I have and she's actually paying attention. She's a huge, huge asset to the success of this place. It was right under their nose this whole time. We had a meeting in the family and Nick has something he wants to say. What we were discussing was me taking a step back from the bar. Angelica would be the general manager of the bar and all of you guys would report directly to Angelica. <laughs> Yup, she definitely deserves this. And it looks like all the other bartenders agree. Yeah, this is unanimous here. You ready to say it? Mm, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is a trip. <laughs> it's not a disgusting color anymore. Yeah, though, <laughs> these bars are, you know, very, very old. And, you know, they didn't look bad. They were just extremely outdated. But I like how they did still acknowledge that this is part of the why not family of bars and it looks way more modern and right nick's house a why not bar it's its own bar but it gets the credibility of being associated with the 50-year history of why not You're yeah like having like a number in front of bar like it might be true but it doesn't sound too appealing to have like oh you know so-and-so bar so-and-so bar number two so-and-so bar number three you guys ready to see it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, All right, go! <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. Has a nice 70s vibe to it. That's so funny because even though it's retro, it looks way more modern than what it looked like before. Oh, this is great. Wow. Oh, man. That's sweet. <laughs> Green mustache, right? So it cost a Wow, that furniture looks so cool. Yeah, this is, a, this is like a very, very impressive rescue. This remodel, I had no idea that they were gonna go this direction. So, this is Nick's house. Then, living room, dining room, bar. This is... Whoa, so it's not just named after, it's not just a name. They actually made it look like the house with different areas of the house. I mean, the outside looks like a house, so that makes a lot of sense. Like we've seen bars that look like houses, but never thought that they would actually intentionally push that concept even further. And then of course, the Farrah Frosty, which we make with snow cone ice. They got a snow cone machine too? This is like, well, yeah, this is probably one of the coolest rescues I've seen so far. Hey, if you enjoyed that, don't forget to check out these other videos as well. And please leave on the comment section on what videos I should react to next. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one.